As of tonight, there are thousands of U.S. citizens, Americans, trapped in Afghanistan. They can't get to the airport in Kabul because the roads to the airport are controlled by the Taliban. Now, the U.S. government allowed that to happen. Joe Biden's on vacation, so we can't explain how he allowed that to happen. But today, the White House press secretary said right out loud that the Biden administration will not guarantee the evacuation of Americans stranded in Afghanistan. Sorry. Can you offer any guarantee to the Americans and Afghan allies that if they remain there past the end of the month, U.S. troops will help them evacuate well, past think, the end of the month? Weisha, our, our focus right now is uh, undoing the work at hand and on the task at hand, and that is day by day, getting as many American citizens, as many SIV applicants, as many members of a vulnerable population who are eligible to be evacuated to the airport and out on planes. Notice how she puts all three together. Americans, special visa applicants, vulnerable population. What the hell is that? You know who's vulnerable is Americans who are trapped in Afghanistan right now. They're American citizens. The American government exists to help American citizens, not to help vulnerable populations, whatever that is. That's a definition that changes depending on which interest group is in power. No, it's Americans. That's the point. It's the American government. But nobody cares. Our leaders are telling us that what really matters is importing tens of thousands of Afghan refugees into the United States before we've even evacuated all of the Americans who are stuck there. Now, keep in mind, these aren't just translators that they want to import, people who've loyally served the U.S. military or whatever. It's anybody in Afghanistan who wants to come here for the free health care. Who's in favor of this? Well, on the record, 46 U.S. senators 43 Democrats and three Republicans just called on the Biden administration to, quote, create a humanitarian parole category for, quote, Afghan women leaders, activists, judges, and other public figures to quickly and efficiently relocate to the United States. Brian Kemp, a kind of pathetic governor of Georgia, he's a Republican apparently, just announced he wants Afghan refugee camps in his state. Okay. So, of course, the media is completely in favor of this. They hate the population of the United States. CNN is accusing anyone who doesn't want this of being a racist. Though, by the way, have you seen the people who live in Afghanistan? A lot of them are whiter than I am. It's nothing to do with race. It has to do with putting American citizens first, period. But they don't get that. It's not even a category that makes sense to them. Politico this morning ran a symposium on how we can help Afghanistan as if we owe Afghanistan a lot. We've helped Afghanistan a lot. Not simply by spending more than a trillion dollars, where'd that money go? But also by letting an awful lot of Afghans move here. More than 100,000 special visas to residents of Afghanistan and Iraq in the past couple of decades. We've issued a total of 300,000 green cards to residents of those two countries. Now we're told that's not enough. We're just hard-hearted or something. We don't take enough immigrants. This country is getting so volatile and divided Maybe we have a moratorium on any new people coming in so we can sort out our own problems till we can learn to get along with each other. And after we have brought all of our Americans home, Americans home. Sean Parnell is running for Senate in the state of Pennsylvania. He was an infantry platoon leader during the war in Afghanistan. He worked with an Afghan interpreter for more than a year before that interpreter helped terrorists plan an IED that killed one of his men. It's a complex subject. He knows it very well, and we're happy to have him on with us tonight. Sean, thanks so much for coming on. Look, this idea that vulnerable populations, whatever the hell that means, should get pride of place are more important than American citizens trapped in Afghanistan. I don't think I've ever seen anything that reveals their priorities more clearly. Yeah. First of all, thanks for having me, Tucker. And if, if you want to help save this country, go to ParnellForSenate.com. Um, so, so look, uh, we should not have a single conversation about what happens with refugees in Afghanistan until we evacuate American citizens first. That should be our number one priority. Um, the situation is urgent. We have to get our people out of there before the Taliban takes us hostage. Look, uh, Tucker, I was in Afghanistan for 485 days, 85% uh, casualty rate in my platoon. Some of my men were wounded twice. Uh, we worked with an Afghan interpreter for, for over a year. He was on every mission with us. He was on every fight with us. And one day we got tasked with an observation post to watch info routes from Pakistan into Afghanistan. Uh, my platoon that day rolled up onto the hill. We wondered why the Afghan villagers all around that hilltop were watching, were watching the platoon. Uh, rolled up onto the hill, 
one of my trucks hit a plastic Italian TC6 anti-tank mine. It wounded four of my soldiers seriously and killed somebody in my platoon. Uh, after that mission was over during our after action report, um, we found out that our interpreter, who had been with us every step of the way, someone who we thought was our friend, we learned that he was working with an Iranian IED cell in Pakistan and coordinated the placement of that mine, which killed one of my troops in, in a devastating attack. Tucker, just because somebody, just, just because an Afghan works with us and is friends with us does not, does not actually mean they're safe to bring here. And this is precisely why we cannot bring 30,000 unvetted Afghan refugees to the United States of America. It's an irresponsible policy. And quite frankly, I can't believe we even have to have this conversation. American citizens have to have the priority. They have, they have, to, they have to be the priority. Yeah, they're not, though. And something happens in the brains, particularly of these middle-aged Republican leaders. Their brains go soft. Low testosterone may be part of the cause. And they decide that they, you know, every dumb idea they have to kind of cringe and, oh, that's okay. You know what I mean? The governor of Arkansas is like this. The governor of Georgia like, what is wrong with these people? Why don't you stand up for American citizens? It's not hard. What, what? I can't wrap my mind around, Tucker, is that we have talking heads, media personalities, and politicians trotting out 20-year-old foreign policy arguments. The idea that we have right. to f fight them there to keep from fighting, fighting us here. What happens in Afghanistan doesn't stay in Afghanistan. Tucker, these are not foreign policy arguments. It, these are arguments for wars in countries at any time, in any place, for an indeterminate amount of time. That's Think exactly. about it. What happens in Africa? What happens in Africa? St it doesn't stay in Africa. What, what happens in Iraq doesn't stay in Iraq. So I'm tired of these, these arguments. Our politicians, our leaders have to be more careful with America's sons and daughters. They're the best of us and we need to take care of them. Amen. There's an ocean separating us from the rest of the world. Let's use it. Sean Parnell, I appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Tucker. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.